Good day, brothers and sisters. I hope you are keeping well. Now, I'm sure if you were asked uh, which of the 12 disciples of Jesus you wouldn't want to be like, I'm very sure you will say Judas Iscariot. Because even non-believers know that the name Judas is synonymous with traitor, a snake in the grass, uh, one who will betray you with a kiss. But it's very sobering to know that Judas was very much like you and me. In fact, he was more Christian than, than many of us. Judas was not just a follower of Jesus. Like the rest of the disciples, he gave up everything to follow Jesus for three years. And that's more than most of us have done. You know, and Luke chapter 9 verses 1 to 2 tells us, that Jesus called the 12 disciples together, and that included Judas. And Jesus gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. So Judas was gifted with preaching, with healing and authority over demons. So we can see that being active in Christian ministry is not a guarantee of spiritual vitality. Sadly, many missionaries, Bible school graduates, pastors, worship leaders and ministry leaders have lost the passion for the Lord and some have left the faith. Judas lived with Jesus for three years and he witnessed the miracles that Jesus performed firsthand. When Jesus fed the 5,000, Judas was there. When, Judas, when Jesus fed the other 4,000, Judas was also there. Judas took the bread and distributed it among the other, you know, together with the other disciples to the crowds. And when Jesus calmed the storm, Judas was present. And he was there when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Judas heard all the teachings of Jesus too. And he heard the warnings that Jesus gave to the Pharisees concerning the sin of self-righteousness, the sin of pride, envy, greed, anger. And he saw many evidences proving Jesus to be the Son of God, the Messiah. And Jesus washed his feet. Yet Judas did not really believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world. He always called Jesus rabbi or teacher, not master or lord. And you know he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, the price they paid for a slave in those days. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? You probably know someone who used to be on fire for the Lord and then they suddenly turned away. I know some parents get troubled and very upset. They have tried their best to raise their children in the ways of God. Brought them to Sunday school, encouraged them to join a youth group, taught them Bible truths and then the child gives up on Jesus. Judas' story contains an important lesson for parents, leaders and for all of us and friends who grieve over someone they love who has abandoned the faith. We may wonder, what, what did we, where did we go wrong? What, could, what more could we have done to stop them from leaving the faith? Did we fail in our teaching or did we fail in our example? But Judas, who was discipled by the best, best teacher, the Lord of you know Lord Jesus teaches us that even the even having the best living example, the best teaching and the most amazing evidence of power and love cannot change the human heart. So what happened to Judas? Why did he fall away? He gave in to the attacks of Satan. And you need to know that Satan always makes a relentless assault on anyone who chooses to follow Jesus. In Luke 22 verse 3, we read how Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot. And in John 13 verse 2, it tells us the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, 
to betray him. But how did Satan enter Judas? We need to know so we can prevent that from happening to us. The reason is because Judas himself opened the door to Satan. Judas had been stealing from the offering bag. John chapter 12 verse 6 tells us he was a thief, a keeper, as keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. Judas never dealt with the sin of stealing. Instead, because of his pride, he could not admit that he was wrong and sinful to steal. Psalm chapter 10 verse 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all of his thoughts. Now Judas made a deal with the chief priest and then he sat down at the supper for the last supper with Jesus and the other disciples. With known sins that he would not confess and Satan entered even further into his life. Unconfessed sin always opens the door to satanic influence. Satan, who is darkness, cannot gain a foothold in the lives of people who are walking in the light of Jesus. But he can gain access when we choose to open the door. Now, sometimes we worry unnecessarily that Satan will somehow pounce on us believers and enter our hearts without our permission and possess us. But unless we open the door to him, he cannot have access to our souls. Jesus gave Judas an opportunity to repent by stating at the dinner table that someone was going to betray him. Everyone asked, is it me? Is it me, Lord? I think Judas did the same. He looked around at the other disciples in faint shock, like, oh my, you know. And I want you to notice that none of the disciples asked Jesus or asked one another, is it Judas? No, because this means that Judas put on a very good act. He came across as a very loyal and faithful disciple of Jesus. He behaved right. He spoke right and he looked right. And I, I, I mean, you know, you think about it, he was chosen as the treasurer of the group instead of the more experienced tax collector, Matthew. So Judas was a deceiver. He, he was a hypocrite, you know. And when Jesus revealed to Judas that Jesus knew it was him who's going to betray him, John 13, 30 says, So Judas left at once, going out into the night. Judas went out into the darkness he had chosen. Instead of taking the opportunity to repent and to seek forgiveness from Jesus, he immediately left the room and went into the darkness. Now we are in an era where many are abandoning the faith they once professed. And so the story of Jude, Judas guards us, you know, wants us to guard our hearts, lest we drift away. We cannot be too smug in our faith, judging others and thinking that we can never ever be tempted to drift or leave. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. We ought to help those also who are weak in faith or close to walking away from the faith. Jude 22 and 23 says, Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. Finally, the story of Judas reminds us that it is disastrous for our soul when we give up on Jesus Christ. Jesus warned those who are eager to follow him. You know, there were many who came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you, I want to follow you. And Jesus warned them. You know, and Luke chapter 9, verse 62, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So if you have chosen Jesus, you have followed Jesus, you serve Jesus, and then you decide, nah, forget it. 
Jesus says that person basically looks back and is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now, it's interesting that the two stories of Peter's denial of Jesus, written in chapter 26 of Matthew, and Judas's betrayal of Jesus, recorded in chapter 27, the stories are placed side by side. And it has the effect of you know, inviting the reader to compare Peter's story with Judas' story. And therefore, the reader is, you know, is, is brought to wonder why Peter was restored to effective ministry, whereas Judas tragically killed himself. You know, don't, you know, it, it really makes us think why one chose one direction and the other, the other tragic option. So one final point, don't believe for one moment that God chose Judas to betray Jesus and that Judas was somehow programmed to do that and therefore he had no way out of that destiny. You know, yes, Jude, Jesus knew that Judas would betray him even when he called him to follow him. But Judas acted out of his own free will when he opened the door to Satan. James chapter 1, 13 and 14 tells us, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself can, does not tempt anyone. Verse 14, But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. If we find ourselves drifting or almost walking away from the faith, let's repent as Peter did and not just regret as Judas did. Be reconciled to the Lord and confess Him as the Lord of our lives. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you that this story of Judas is in there as a warning for all of us. God, Help us not to judge people whom we think are weak in the faith because we ourselves could be weak and we ourselves could one day be tempted to fall away. Instead, Lord, help us to guard our hearts. Help us to be mindful that the devil is a roaring lion seeking to devour all of us. God, and I pray, Lord, that we will always uh, wear the armour of God and that we will always be mindful to, to check our unbelief and to, to watch for sins that are unconfessed. And Lord, that I pray that we will be ready and willing to quickly repent and to be reconciled with you. Thank you, Lord. And I pray none of us will ever be a Judas and none of us will ever leave the faith. We praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.